Hello everyone. In my previous video, I just briefed you about the various parts of speech. Understanding the different parts of speech is important for several reasons. It helps us to communicate effectively and we can use language more effectively to convey our thoughts, ideas and emotions. We can choose the right words and phrases to express ourselves clearly and precisely. Also, it improves our writing skills by using proper grammar and syntax. It enhances our reading comprehension. We can more easily recognize the function of each word in a sentence and help us to understand the meaning of a text more fully and accurately. So, by understanding the basic grammatical structures of a language, we can more easily learn new vocabulary and sentence patterns. All right. In today's lecture, I will be explaining in detail about the noun and its various types through simple examples. Understanding nouns is important in grammar. Right? When you talk about it, they are the building blocks of sentences and it plays a very crucial role in sentence structure. And they are one of the most fundamental parts of speech in English. When you use nouns incorrectly, that will lead to confusion, ambiguity or even misinterpretation of a message. So, how do you define a noun? In simple terms, it is referred as naming words. It can be defined that a person, a place, a thing or idea representation. And it's a part of speech that is used to name and identify specific entities or concepts. When you look into the nouns, it can function as the subject of a sentence or even the object of a verb or preposition or the possessive form indicating ownership. So, we can best understand the nouns by looking in turn of its each type. I have mentioned here some of the important types of nouns common proper collective compound concrete abstract countable and uncountable let me explain you in detail about each type of nouns to begin with common noun which are very general and non-specific nouns that refer to a category or class of people, place, things or concepts. Common nouns are not capitalized unless they are at the beginning of a sentence. I have given you some common nouns, examples of common nouns. So when you go through the examples in general, they refer to things that are not specific, but rather are shared by many members of a group. For example, dog. It's a common noun because it refers to any dog, not a specific dog. Similarly, book is a common noun because it refers to any book, not a specific book. Proper noun. What is a proper noun? That is, they are the specific names of people, places, things or ideas. Proper nouns are always capitalized to indicate their individuality and uniqueness. Proper noun, they generally refer to specific particular entities rather than general categories or classes. 
Look at the examples given here. Proper noun, they refer to specific things that are unique and one of a kind. For example, New York City is a proper noun because it refers to a specific city. While city is a common noun because it refers to any city. Similarly, hurry is a proper noun because it refers to a specific person. While if I use boy instead of hurry, it is a common noun because it refers to any boy. So this is how when you learn grammar, you should be able to differentiate and understand the differences between each category. Right? The next one is the collective noun. What is a collective noun? It refers to a group of people, animals or things. They are singular in grammatical number even though it stands for plural aggregate and must therefore be used with a singular verb. When you look into the examples given here, in general, collective nouns, they refer to a group, right? It may be a thing or people, those who are considered as single unit. For example, team is a collective noun because it refers to a group of individuals who work together to achieve a common goal. Similarly, herd is a collective noun because it refers to a group of animals such as cows or sheep that move and behave as a single entity. Right? The next one is concrete noun. Common and concrete noun are synonymous. You should clearly understand the difference between each. Concrete nouns refer to physical, tangible things that can be perceived through the senses. When I mean senses, the five senses such as sight, touch, taste, smell or hearing. They are things that can be seen, heard, smelled, touched or tasted. Concrete, the particular word, it means physically substantial. Concrete nouns, it refers to the objects that are real and exist in the physical world. See the examples given here? They are things that we can interact with directly. We can experience through our senses. For example, car is a concrete noun because it is a physical object that we can see, touch. Similarly, beach is a concrete noun. It is a physical place that we can visit and experience with our senses. So that is how you should understand the difference between the common noun and the concrete noun. Yes, you should not get confused on all these. The next is the compound noun. They are the nouns that are made up of two or more separate words which together function as a single noun. Compound nouns can be formed in several ways with a combination of two nouns or a noun and an adjective or a noun and a verb or a verb and a participle. I've given examples on each category of compound nouns. See, they are used to describe some specific concept or object that are made up of two or more separate elements. Now, for example, bookshelf is a compound noun because it refers to a specific type of furniture that is used to store books. Similarly, football is a compound noun 
here it refers to a specific sport that involve kicking a ball with the feet yes i hope you can clearly understand what is compound noun the next is the abstract nouns here it refers to the ideas concept emotion qualities which cannot be perceived through the senses i told for the concrete noun everything is perceived through the five senses but here for the abstract noun it cannot be perceived through the senses they are intangible things that we cannot see we cannot hear touch smell or taste anything that are strictly non physical is abstract now when you see the examples given here you can easily understand abstract nouns generally they refer to the things that are not physical but rather the concepts or the qualities that we understand and experience in our minds for example love is an abstract noun because it refers to an emotion or feeling that we cannot see or touch but that we can experience and understand similarly honesty is an abstract noun because it refers to a quality or trait that cannot be perceived through the senses but we can recognize and appreciate so hope you are clear with the differences between common concrete and abstract which should not be uh which one should not get confused about it the next one is countable nouns they are the nouns that can be counted as discrete individual units such as 1 2 3 and so on they can either be singular or plural depending on whether they refer to one or more than one entity so some singular examples and plural examples i have given here so it can be counted or enumerated as individual units now for example book is a countable noun because we can count the number of books we have on a shelf or the number of books we read in a year similarly apple is a countable noun because we can count the number of apples in a basket or the number of apples we eat in a day so that is how we have to differentiate things practically we have to experience what we learn then the last one is uncountable nouns which are also known as mass nouns they are the nouns that cannot be counted as individual units or discrete objects they refer to things that are seen as a whole or as a mass rather than as separate units so uncountable nouns are always singular and cannot be used with articles like a or an now see the examples i have given here they are not seen as individual units but rather as a whole or a mass for example water is an uncountable noun because we cannot count individual units of water but rather we measure it in volume right similarly knowledge is an uncountable noun because it refers to a concept or idea that cannot be counted as an individual unit but rather as a whole so finally to conclude with learning about noun is essential for mastering english grammar a strong foundation in grammar is important for all aspects of language learning including reading writing speaking and listening comprehension 
Overall, learning about noun is an important step in developing a strong foundation in English grammar and communication skills. If you are satisfied with the content that I explained today, do subscribe my channel and give your comments. Thank you.